Hello everyone, Ashford here. Today with another video, this time, it's another comic book haul. So it's been about a month and a week since the last one, and uh, I'm sorry about that, but I have exams right now. Um, I just finished my second to last. Um, so next week is my last, and um, I'll do a birthday haul just where it's my birthday stuff. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be like a comic haul number twelve. It's just birthday haul. But this is comic haul. As you can see, it's a pretty good one. It's the best since the comic pickups eight. But this is back issues. These are all new books, and these are all the graphic novels that I picked up. And then I'll flip through this. And uh, I didn't know where to place this picture. So I thought, why not on the set? It looks really nice, actually. And um, just for heads up, um, I'll after my birthday, I'll do an updated graphic novel collection. That's not all the graphic novels. There's some there and some there. Like there, there, there's also some over at my dad's. But yeah, so I'll make that after my birthday which is the 27th of June, so it'll probably come out the 28th or 29th. Um, yeah, and I'll also do some other videos, but the graphic novel collection is the one that I can look forward to right now. Um, so, let's just get into it. Uh, let's start with new books, as always. No, let's start with graphic novels. That's all I was going to start with. So, I got Venom Volume 1 Lethal Protector. Lethal, Lethal Protector Blood in the Water. I had three out of four of these issues, but I didn't read them uh, at that point because I missed one of them. So, instead, I just bought the graphic novel. And I read this, I haven't read it, and I really enjoyed it. It's just fun Venom. Um, it's really enjoyable, and this is some of the best art I've seen. Like ever. Every fucking panel is amazing. I got well, the, the, the Mark Bagman one. Mark Bagman, my favorite artist. Here. Just kidding. You're in the light. You can see that's, that's awesome. And I like how they've given the symbiote like a character. So, really enjoyed this. I just wish it was a little thicker. Like this, it, there can be, barely be like the text on it. Yeah. So what you can see here is All-Star Superman, because I wanted to get into Superman as well after having seen a lot of videos with him by called the Real Combo Gamer, who's a huge Superman dude. And uh, I never really like gravitated towards Superman, but he sounded really interesting. I've, I've always liked him. Well, when I was very little, I didn't like him. But I do like him. Um, and I bought this. I'm halfway done with it. And it's already in like my top 10 favorite comics of all time. I, well not top 10, like top 20. I love this book. It's amazing. It gets, and Superman is way higher up on my top 10 superheroes list now. Which I will do at some point. Um, but this book is amazing. The artwork is amazing. There is some rough parts in it. Like there is one, where was it? I think I can find it. Yeah, it's there. You know, uh... But it is very cool, and I love the, I don't know, there's something very simple about it. It's just box, box, box. I just, it's a great book. Um, I just read the one with Jonathan Kent, where he dies. That is my favorite, the ones I've read thus far. The Lex Luthor one was cool, but I think it was a little drawn out. But uh, Lex Luthor is very funny, so, yeah. But All-Star Superman, awesome. And uh, I'm going to be trying to get uh, Secret Origin after this one. Then I got Spider-Man Deadpool Volume 1. I read a few of these when they came out. I think I have read all the issues in here, but I can't remember them that well, so I'll probably just, you know, read it again. Uh, you know, all one sitting, because I remember I read the first two, and I was like, I like that, and then I read the other three, four, five, like, months after, so. But yeah, except to dig into this. I love Deadpool, and Spider-Man's my favorite character in all fiction, so... Yeah, and then this one, because I've gotten so much into Arrow, and I'm considering maybe doing an Arrow Season 6 review. Well, not a review for Season 6, but like a ranking of all the seasons. I could consider doing that. But, this is Green Arrow, The Longbow Hunters, even though if I wanted to get a similar uh, 
comic to the um, the series, well, the TV show. I should probably just uh, read some more Batman comics, which I'll. I don't. I already read. I already read so many Batman comics. But what I mean by that, as a joke, is that the Arrow series is basically just Arrow, Batman. You know, ba Batman with a bow, and who occasionally kills people. But Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters. Uh, I read some of this, and I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna read it through. I'm gonna start from the beginning, and because I just read like the first issue, I was like, eh. So I'll just read from start to fi to finish at some point. But it wasn't that thus far amazing. But it's it's cool to see such a because this was before they got away. It was back when, as soon as they didn't have the comics code, blah blah blah, they just. They just wrote whatever they want. So there is nudity, all types of she in this. Um, yes, then there is Ultimate Origins, which I'm really excited to read. Um, and all these I've gotten in the last, like, mo this one, these two I got like a month ago. And then All Star Superman, Venom, Spider Man, and this one I've gotten, I got that a couple days ago. So. Yeah, Ultimate Origins, uh, it, I'm really excited to read this, though I don't like the origin of how Peter's parents die as much as I like how it is in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game. And then I got Superman Earth 1, because I love G. Miles Rosinski on Spider-Man, and I want to get into Superman, and this is the origin, of course I know the origin, but I want to read it, so, really excited to dig into this. Those are all the graphic novels. Um, so let's get into the new books. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, before we get into 800, I just read 801 online. I'll be buying it tomorrow. Or, this, I'm recording this Wednesday, so maybe first Friday, but whatever. I read the issue. It's really fucking great. It's really like 9.5 out of 10. But, if it was a separate issue, but this is not... It's not a, it's, if it was like not tied to this, but it's not an epilogue. It's just about, it's just a love letter to Spider-Man, which I love that when it's then slots final issue. But like, that means that all the stuff in this, like what happens to Dr. Oxford's did and may find out Peter was Spider-Man. All that, that's up to Nick Spencer to decide. Which is cool, but you know, I mean, it's 801 had like, one thing was like, eh, but it's not like SJW. There's two things. There was that, there was this girl that only named diverse superheroes as her favorite. Well, technically she, she said Thor, but at this point, I guess, Thor's still a girl. Well, now she, he's a man, but whatever. Um, the regular Thor, yeah. And then she said Black Panther and Captain Marvel. I was like, eh, you couldn't name like one. Uh, of the not diverse catches. Not to be racist or sexist or anything, just saying it came out a little too SJW Dan Slot. Um but Dan Slot has been picking up lately. And there was this other thing where it's like yeah, yeah, you will know what I'm talking about. But it didn't really bother me, I was just like, uh um Yeah, but the Maze Robin 800, great issue, loved it. I have made a review, you can click right up there, uh, and you'll see the review, and uh, yeah, it's a long review. Uh, I mean, Spider-Man 800 variant, the John Romita senior variant, uh, cool cover, I don't know, really know what Gwen Stacy is there, because it's something to do with the Green Goblin, uh, okay, but all, yeah. Oh, I did a review for you too, I mean, Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows, 19. Uh, it was, it, I like this issue, like I said. It's fun. It's the best Renew of Out since issue 12. That's not saying that much, but still. It's a really enjoyable issue. And um, funny enough, the series is going to T plus 13 and up now, which is interesting. I don't know if they're going to be darker because right now it's like the, the happiest comic I'm reading. Like all the other comics I'm reading are really depressing. Well, not not depressing. I mean, spectacular and amazing aren't exactly what we call depressing. That's one complaint I have about 800. I mean, I would put it down to 9 out of 10 now and not 9.5. And if and May doesn't find out he's Spider-Man, then 8.5 out of 10. But 
not to brag on the not to just hack down on the book because it's a good book I'm just saying that there it wasn't dark enough and there wasn't enough casualties I don't think so like flash died okay that was really badly handled to be honest um, and yeah they're probably gonna come back like oh the end of it but it wasn't dark enough I don't think so and I know I'm not saying like spider is just supposed to be Batman it's just supposed to be fucking dark you know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that and the the, the conclusion to a kind of dark storyline should be really dark, but it wasn't. Um, Batman issue 47. Uh, I really like this issue. I wouldn't say love, but I really like this issue. I really love this cover. I really like this cover, but I think Batman looks a little too like, like he's... Somebody took his head, well, his arms and his legs and just stretched them out. Um, but it's Tony S. Daniel, who is my second favorite Batman artist. Well, he's tied for me. My favorite is Jim Lee, of course. My second favorite is Tony S. Dan Daniel. Uh, Tony Daniel. I can't remember it. I think his full name is Tony S. Daniel. Yeah. Uh, and Greg Capullo. Those are my second favorite. Then Batman 48. This issue was great. Um, it's very, like, Tom King. Like, I, every issue I've read of these, I always say it's fucking weird. And this issue is fucking weird. Um... But it's great. So it's a very, like I said, a very Tom King. Batman doesn't say a single word throughout the entire book. There's a lot of like philosophical blah blah blah. It's hard to understand sometimes, uh, Tom King. You know, sometimes it's like, like it, he's writing it for four year olds, not four year olds. Jesus Christ, those four year olds come second. That this issue is really fucking dark. But forty year olds, because there's a lot of philosophical stuff. Like he's like right into his, only his own age. Like, I would say you have to be uh, 14 to read this issue. Um, but to understand it, I didn't understand that much of it, to be honest. Um, so, but it was a great issue anyways. Like, the head-on story I understood, but just, there's a lot of, like, philosophical blah, blah, blah. But great issue. Super excited for issue 50. I hope they don't chicken out and don't marry Batman. Deadpool number one. You may be surprised that Deadpool's here, but I love this issue. It's hilarious. Um, and um, I'm excited to get the second one. I just gotta tell my uh, my comic store owner, or what you're able to call him. He's called, he's, he, his name's Donald, but um, I'm just gonna tell him to put it on my pull list. Then I got Flash, issue 47. I'm only picking up Flash for Flash War, and if I enjoy the entire thing, then I'll start picking up Flash. Um, but I enjoyed this issue, most of it. The end was especially cool. But um, I also just bought the because of the cover. But I'm gonna pick up this storyline. Justice League number one. Uh, not feeling it. It's really like overly superhero y in the bad way. Not in like, you know, it's like Jake Eric Flash and the Flash is one like. Okay, now I'm gonna go save this cat from a tree, you know? It's not really what... I mean, Batman feels so out of place in this Justice League. I prefer the Justice League origin Justice League um, from New 52. But this was just... Eh. I liked, I loved that conversation about who made the best Batman voice. I loved the start of it. Though it was a little too, like, like I said, in the lame way, like the bad way of superhero, where it's just they're totally good. There no nothing wrong. Like you know, 40s Justice League, even though it wasn't like JSA. Let's say like Justice Side of America ish. I don't really want that. I wanted more to remind me of the Avengers, but this wasn't really my thing. I may read the graphic novel once come out when it comes out if I heard any if, if I hear better things about it, but. Thus far, I'm not really feeling this issue, um, but the Justice League series before this got a lot of hate. Um, so, and then I picked up this issue because well, it's the same cover, but it's uh, well, it's not not the same cover, same book, but it's a new cover and it looks amazing. Now we got Peter Parker as a spectacular Spider-Man issue three or four. Already did a review on it like a month ago, so go click on that if you want to see that. Love this book. Can't believe it's been that long. Um. Peter Parker's The Spectacular Spider-Man, issue 305. I love this issue. Fuck, I love this issue. It was so great. Like, 
holy crap, I flipped out. I had seen Yellow Flash, his thumbnail, so I was kind of like, is that the Insomniac suit the future Peter has? Spoilers. And no, but it, there is, he is definitely inspired by the artist or whoever came up with the design for the suit. But I love this issue. Old Peter, they confirmed Peter to be like freaking 35, not 35, like 33 in this continuity. Because Norman Osborn says that this Peter, who is the same age, like the Peter from the other timeline, is the same age as our Peter. Well, well he is, we know that. But Norman Osborn says it's been 15 years since he was active. And the last time he was active was around the time of I mean, Spider-Man 40, which is right up there. And there. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but, and in that he's like, I don't know, 18? So Peter is like 33. Which is weird to think of, but it's cool, I guess. Just makes it even weirder that he's not married. <clears throat> That's why. But, great issue. Venom number one. I really enjoyed this issue. I freaking made a review. My phone fucked up and I couldn't get it over to my computer. So, yeah. But Venom number one, really great and like the best cover of all time. So, cool. And I got these. I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna read them. I, well, I probably am, but I didn't love. I don't have like the urge to read them. But Batman versus Rachel Ghoul and Bat Nightwing versus Hush. A prelude to Batman's wedding. Um, I guess Daredevil 603. Haven't read this one yet, but I will get to it. Uh, Doomsday Clock number five. Haven't read the other. I haven't read issue one and two and maybe three. I don't think so, but I'll get to it at some point. Then I got Deadpool Assassin. I didn't sadly didn't get the Mark Bagley band, but I also haven't read this one yet. I got this one and some others here like. A few days ago so but there's that's why I put all the ones I hadn't read at the end Deadpool Assassin number one and then Venom number two which I'm really excited to read um, and uh, that was all the new books Jesus Christ this video is long uh, going on we have some spectacular spider-mans we have spectacular spider-man 139 I may have forgotten to show some issues because I did record this video where I had video where I had way less and I wasn't happy with the result. Not only because I didn't have that much to show, but also because I just wasn't happy with the video. Um, so there may be some I'm not showing. Maybe I have put an issue. I'm not, I don't think I have. I'm like 95% sure I haven't, but put an issue in that I've shown in another video. Hopefully I haven't, but yeah. Peter Park Spectacular, I'll just pick out Spider-Man 142. Love that cover. I feel like I have, the, have, the, ha, have had these for like ha, six months or something like that. So we tied this by 148, awesome cover, 161, 189, I bought another copy because my other, like I had this poster here, that was in this book, and I had it before with the poster, but um, I accidentally broke the poster, well, broke, I ripped it apart by accident because, see, it's right beside my bed, and sometimes I put my pillow up against it, and then I don't know what I did. But careful now, so it won't break. Rip. Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man 2, 16. Awesome cover. Spectacular Spider-Man 2, 24. Awesome cover. Spectacular Spider-Man 2, 25 with the good guy, Green Goblin. I hate this era of Spider-Man, but the covers are nice. I love Sal Pashimaba's art. It's very simple, but it looks amazing. It has a lot of like, because it's like he uses more detail in like the things that he, I don't know, it's kind of like when if a movie has like a lot of practical effects and then they use special effects for the things that only have to be. Um, not to say that I don't like detail stuff, I just mean, it's hard to explain, but I just love the simplistic style and then sometimes very detailed. Well, not very, it's hard to explain like he does a lot of focus on like emotions in the face even though it's very simple it's like John Romita Jr. Um, but Spectacular Spider-Man 229 which is this weird 90s cover but who cool not Spectacular Spider-Man 237 Spectacular Spider-Man 246 and Spectacular Spider-Man 263 and Spider-Man the 90s one 26 I'm gonna put this in the bag board but I bought it so I can get this posted 
um, because it's a cool poster. Well, I didn't know it was that poster, but yeah. So that was all the back issues as well that I just want to show this here. There's something about, I, I am totally against all that SJW bullshit, but something I kind of find annoying, like comics and diversity. I don't like comics and diversity. I think Yellow Flash is a far better channel. Also, the comic is a far better channel than comic and diversity. Because comics and di diversity, that's something I th think Yellow Flash does. Sometimes, like, they just judge the book uh, in it if there is SJW undertones in it. Like, um, Yellow Flash doesn't do that that much. You know, sometimes they can sometimes him and coming and diversity make the 90s sound like it was like the best time for comics ever like the late 90s but yellow flash made a video for example i mean spider-man new revised issue 17 whatever the fuck it may not be sjw but it sucks and it's true while i think sometimes comic and diversity just make it sound like okay it's not sjw it's a perfect comic which i think is kind of weird Excited for this is Mark Bagley on art and Mike Costa. Is, is he actually like, um, he's not the writer for Venom, is he? No, Donnie Cates. But I'm um, excited for this. It looks amazing. Bagley. Uh, Spider Geddon is coming. I'm fucking hyped for this because Spider Man PS4 is in some, the Spider Man, blah, 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 is in it. Holy hell, I'm excited for that game. When I get my monthly payment i'm gonna freaking pre-order the collector station holy hell i hate this new avengers roster uh captain america the immortal hulk nobody gets there here we go peter parks spider-man 308 don't not a fan of this cover but chip zadarsky is my man so so the amazing spider-man issue what's that three it's an homage to that issue where Peter and Spider-Man are fighting, like, the cover of them, but looks cool. Yeah, like I said, T+. Uh, ben Ryan Scarlet Spider 22. I may be picking up this series. Um, if it's... Can you guys, if you guys are picking up, can you guys tell me if it's good or not? Because I'm not too sure. Um, Ryan Venom number 5. Then we have Bullshit Miles Morales Spider-Man Annual 1. Sorry if I mean, you like Miles, but he's just... I hate Miles Morales. Um, I got kicked out of a Facebook group of my favorite YouTube channel. Like, Comic Pop is my favorite YouTube channel. It's not because it said anything like SJW stuff. It's because I didn't know you couldn't, like, advertise a channel. I didn't advertise my own. Chill out. I just just put a link for one of Yellow Flash's videos that I... Where it's like, oh my god, the, the end of MCU. Like, they're gonna... Because if you haven't heard, like, they're going to introduce SGW characters. And they all, all the members just crucified me. They just flipped out and called me all types of things. I'm going to start picking this up. Why not? Yeah, I'm going to start picking it up. Um, is it still versus or is it... Uh, yeah. That was all Spider-Man. Then there's Daredevil here. Oh, that's, that's actually perfect. It's both sides. We just put both of them out. And then we have Black Panther. Have you seen... I was on Instagram, right? And I'm following Marvel. And they had this where it says, Critics and fans agree. That's amazing. False advertisement. Miss Marvel. <clears throat> They're going to make a movie of that horseshit. Okay. Uh, I'm really excited for Wolverine to come back. All this stuff. Yeah, yeah, Deadpool Assassin. I'm excited for that. What is this bullshit? What is this? Like, even kids. I know that this is totally just directly for like five year olds, but no five year old. Well, maybe five year olds, but like five year olds can't fucking read. So this is. Okay, let's just say. If the, this is probably for like seven-year-olds. Seven-year-olds don't want to read this. Like, what is this? I don't have Star Wars, which I don't really give a shit about. Even though I enjoyed Solo, even though I was so prepared to hate it. I actually kind of wanted to hate it because I hate the last Jedi and I want to boycott that one. But, oh, and there's a graphic novel one to show. This graphic novel is coming out and this one is also coming out, which are cool. Like it's a Venom one, and 
that one on the side of the car as well. The Year of Venom. It's more so the Year of Spider-Man as well. Like, if you think about it, we have a new Spider-Man game, a Spider-Man, a Spider-Man appearance in Avengers Infinity War, a Spider-Man movie. Okay, let me just say, that second instant Spider-Verse trailer, I didn't like it. Green Goblin is a fucking dragon, and Peter Parker is not Peter Parker. I didn't like that trailer, but I'm still excited for the movie. Um, so, yeah, but that was the entire haul. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.